People with spinal cord injuries spend a majority of their time in wheelchairs. Performing activities from them, such as dressing, reading, eating, cooking, and cleaning. We typically refer to these functions as activities of daily living, or ADLs. Performing ADLs frequently requires people with spinal cord injuries to reach outside the base of support provided by the wheelchair. Paralysis and weakness of the trunk and lower extremities resulting from paraplegia and tetraplegia can impact the ability to balance while performing tasks with the upper extremities. Initially, even simple activities of daily living may seem daunting to new wheelchair users. The, the small balance techniques are very important, you know, to manipulate that, that little bit more than you did before, you know, just that little bit more to be able to reach out that much farther every day or it's, it's huge because it, it makes your whole life uh, easier, quicker, uh, more rewarding if you realize it, if you look at it like that, you know, if, if you say, wow, I couldn't pick that up yesterday or I couldn't, you know, lean that way or there, there's a lot of things that come into that. Mastering the ability to balance in the wheelchair will help the new wheelchair user improve his self-confidence and effectively function from the wheelchair. In addition, a wheelchair user must also learn how to gain stability and control while performing daily tasks, especially when he needs to move outside of his base of support. To feel confident in your chair, we do have to go back to the basics because the fundamentals are what we build on. It's a building block. In this video, we will review concepts of balance and stabilization that can improve the abilities of people with spinal cord injuries to become more functional in their wheelchairs. To assist in demonstrating these concepts, we will be highlighting Zeke, who has a T5 level of injury, Mina, with a T12 L1 level of injury, Spence, who has a C7 level of injury, James, with a C6 level of injury, Lynn, who has a C6-7 incomplete level of injury, Joe, with a T11, T12 level of injury, and Stephanie, who also has a T11, T12 level of injury. And I think somebody teaching me how to utilize my chair to my benefit has extended my independence. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Balance training teaches the person with a spinal cord injury how to control his body in space without external support. Control of the trunk is regained through the use of the head, eyes, upper extremities, and available use of the trunk muscles. Balance to me is crucial because if you lose your balance, you're out of the chair. And once you're out of the chair, you've got to figure out a way to get back in the chair. So balance is crucial and that's definitely something that you deal with um, on a daily basis with every activity that you do. The goal of balance training is for the person with a disability to gain confidence in his ability to control his body within and outside the base of support so that he can become more independent in performing daily tasks from any surface, be it a bed, wheelchair, or even a car. Balance training can begin in either the more functional short sitting position or the long sitting position, which is the easiest position to begin training. Short sitting is a position from which most functional activities will be performed, such as transfers, or movements from the wheelchair. Short sitting on the side of the mat for someone with poor balance, however, can be frightening. Sometimes it helps to have an aid sit in front of the client or place a soft surface on the floor to help decrease fear or anxiety. Placing two mats close together with the client in between can also help decrease fear of falling. The therapist can start by having the client support himself with his upper extremities and maintain that position on the edge of the mat. Then the therapist can be positioned behind the client and support him at the shoulders. At that point, the client can lift up his arms with the therapist helping 
to find his balance point without upper extremity support. Safety is a key component at this time and it is necessary for the client to know that the therapist is supporting him and will prevent him from falling. The therapist can progress by moving the client through extreme ranges of motion forward and back to allow him to find his balance. The client will automatically begin to use the compensatory strategies to try to regain his balance. If the client moves too far forward, he will extend his head and retract his shoulders to bring his center of gravity back. Frequently, clients will look up towards the ceiling to further assist in regaining their balance. When clients are falling backwards, they'll tend to protract their shoulders and flex their head to bring themselves forward again. Once a client feels comfortable maintaining a hands-free position with support at the shoulder, the therapist can let him know that she will let go so the client can begin to work on maintaining his balance without any support. The clients need to learn to use small movements of the arm and head if he begins to lose balance. Most people will throw their arms and head forwards or back once they feel off balance, which will cause them to overcompensate and lose their balance in the opposite direction. Only very small movements are necessary to maintain balance. You're like a pendulum now, and you have to really uh, balance that with your head and shoulders and hips. And, you know, uh, it's very delicate. It's, it's a small, you know, a, a millimeter of movement makes a huge difference. Once a client can maintain his balance without support, the therapist can begin to challenge him in all directions. Forward. Back. Left, right, and even on diagonals. The lower the level of injury, the more the therapist can challenge the client. The same process can be repeated in long sitting. It's easier to maintain balance in the long sitting position because of the greater base of support and maybe the position chosen to begin balance training. One caution is to make sure that the client has 90 to 100 degrees of a straight leg raise. If not, slightly modify the long sitting position by flexing his knees, which will slack the hamstrings and avoid pulling the pelvis into a posterior tilt and stretching out the lower back. If the client continues to be pulled into a posterior tilt, even with the knees flexed, the therapist may choose to begin balance training in the short sitting position until sufficient range of motion can be achieved in the lower extremities in the pelvis. An overstretched lower back can impair the ability to perform activities such as rolling or transferring. The therapist can again support the client by the shoulders in a hands-free position and then release him and have him maintain his balance with head and shoulder movements. The therapist can progress to challenging him in all directions as was done in short sitting. Even though many people with spinal cord injuries usually don't perform bilateral upper extremity activities without external support, Learning to balance without the upper extremity support does help to increase body awareness and control. Challenge and assist a client in learning his new balance point by using various catching, throwing, and reaching activities. These activities can be performed in either the short or long sitting position. The balloon toss is an easy way to begin balance training as it requires the least strength and dexterity. Make sure someone is always spotting from behind with a hand in front of the client to prevent him from falling forward. This activity is especially good for persons with tetraplegia because it does not require hand function. As the balance improves, the therapist can progress to a larger balloon. The larger the object, the more challenging it is. The therapist can begin to toss the balloon within the client's base of support and progress by throwing it farther and farther outside the base of support in order for him to reach it. A small ball such as this will require hand function. Again, begin by throwing within a client's base of support and progress outside of it to increase the challenge. Altering the speed of the throw and rate of return will also challenge balance. Performing the same sequence with a larger, heavier ball will further increase the level of difficulty. Reaching for objects outside of the base of support with and without upper extremity assistance can challenge balance in a different way. Without upper extremity support, the client will need to counterbalance by moving his head and other arm in the opposite direction. Using arm support requires moving and controlling the trunk while weight bearing with one extremity in a position outside of the base of support. 
Again, these activities can be performed in both the long and short sitting position. The therapist can have someone without hand function reach and touch the object and move back to the starting position. You can move the object farther and farther away to challenge his balance. He can also pick up and move an object from one place to another. Varying the size and weight of the object can further challenge balance. Clients should practice balancing in all positions that may be adopted during the day. For example, the therapist can work on balance and strength in side lying on elbows. Make sure the client can maintain the proper position at the shoulder girdle. If the client is not yet strong enough, the therapist will need to maintain scapular alignment during the activity to avoid injury. Clients also need to be taught how to catch themselves and protect themselves from falling if they do lose their balance. The ability to prevent falls increases a client's confidence to try more activities and to push his balance limits, which, in the end, increases a client's access to the environment and willingness to participate in more activities. Once mastered, balance and protective reaction techniques become second nature. Here are a few examples of people using these techniques when performing routine activities. Stephanie is using her head to counterbalance her forward trunk motion while she's reaching for the dryer controls. James is using a similar technique to open the refrigerator door. Using the head to assist in maintaining balance when reaching in any direction is a useful technique, especially with bimanual tasks when there isn't an option to stabilize with the other extremity. Spence demonstrates this technique well. Here, Spence has to extend his head while donning his bag with his IC supplies in order to prevent him from falling forward. Another useful technique to assist in maintaining balance is to extend the extremity contralateral to the reaching extremity. Extending the opposite arm serves as a counterbalance to the direction of motion of the reaching extremity. This helps to stabilize the trunk and prevent falls. Using a combination of moving the head and the arm in the opposite direction of the reach is frequently necessary, especially when an object is being held that prevents using an extremity for support, as in Zeke's case. In regards to balance training, the client initially needs to be comfortable and confident in controlling his body and space within his base of support. However, many activities performed from a wheelchair require reaching to a point outside of a client's base of support. In order to access the environment outside his base of support, the client will also need to master compensatory strategies from the wheelchair. External support is required to prevent loss of balance when a client's center of gravity moves outside the base of support, as in a reaching activity. People frequently use different parts of the wheelchair and or the environment around them to achieve the necessary stability. Spence will demonstrate the most common compensatory strategies used for stabilization. Hooking on the push handle or back post, holding the wheel, leaning onto the thigh, holding onto the front hanger or leg rest, using the environment around the person, such as a counter or sink, or in this instance, the mat. Initially, clients with higher levels of injury may begin learning stabilization techniques by using a chest strap to prevent them from falling forward, but the goal is to have the client not rely on that kind of restraint for functional activities. Yeah, the best piece of advice I can give a new injury patient is to get rid of the chest strap as soon as possible. So they're not relying on it and they learn their center of balance a lot quicker, which will help them with uh, transfers and uh, reaching and anything, any other activity in a chair. The most important is compensation, I think, in, in any of that. It doesn't matter how much strength you have. If you're not compensating for what you don't have, it, it doesn't much matter because you can't pick it up off the floor if you go down to get it wrong. It goes back to using my chair and knowing that my chair was there to help me. Bef when I was first injured, I didn't want to touch the chair. I felt like the chair was going to hurt me more than I already was. But you, knowing that the chair is there to help you and use the chair as much as you can. 
Let's look at how a variety of people with spinal cord injuries use each strategy to perform their daily activities. Hooking on the push handle or back post is a common way to stabilize when picking up objects or reaching for items that are outside the base of support. Stephanie is using her towel rack for stability while reaching down into the dryer. And Mina is holding on to the top of the back post to reach up for clothes in her closet. James is actually using a combination of techniques, bracing himself with the wheel as well as the back post. Reaching down to the ground is challenging, and using this technique requires sufficient shoulder extension. Hooking onto the back post to pick up objects while the chair is in motion can provide stability. Hooking can assist with stability when reaching in all directions, forward, up, down, and to the side. Holding onto the wheel is another useful technique to assist with stabilization when performing daily activities. This technique is especially useful for lateral reaches. It can be used for forward movements, most successfully for people with hand function. During a dynamic activity, you can brace against the wheel to slow down as well as to assist in stabilization. Stephanie uses this technique to reach toward the ground to put her bowls away as well as to reach up into the cabinet to grab her measuring cup. Lynn is using his armrest as support to reach into the cupboard, as well as towards his phone as he is in a power wheelchair and does not have access to the wheel. Stephanie braces on her wheel to help stabilize herself during activities such as lower extremity dressing. Lynn uses this technique to assist with setting the table as well as placing his coffee cup in the microwave. Stabilizing using the wheel is especially useful in long reaches. Holding onto the wheel, or armrest in Lynn's case, allows him to be successful with dynamic activities such as vacuuming and gardening. Lowering the trunk under the thighs is a useful means of stabilization, especially when reaching towards the floor. However, it is important to have a strategy to return to an upright position when using this technique. Bracing on the thigh with a forearm provides a wider base of support for stabilization, especially with forward reaches. This technique is successful with both low and high reaches. A stable trunk is important to successfully swipe an ID card for people without finger control.